Hi everybody, welcome to episode 17 of the Photography Explained podcast. In this episode, what time of day is best to take photos? I'm your host Rick and each week I will try to explain one photographic thing to you in plain English in less than 10 minutes without the irrelevant details. My aim is to explain things in just enough detail to help us with our photography and no more. Yep, we're on episode 17 and I still have to read that out. Maybe by the time I get to 50 I'll be able to remember this. What time of day is best to take photos? This is, um, I think it's episode five in a series of podcasts about composition and taking photos. I don't want to dive into aperture, f-stop, gear, blah, 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 because I think that the process of taking photos and composition is more important than the gear. As I've said before, and I will say again, you can take a great photo with average gear. You can take a rubbish photo with great gear. It's not the gear, it's you what you point your camera at, what you include and do not include, what your composition is, and how you take the photo. And that leads us seamlessly, completely by chance, back to the subject of what time of day is the best to take photos. Well, the best time of day to take photos depends on the following. The subject, the orientation of the subject, the weather, indoors or outdoors, commercial pressures, and artificial light. As words with friends just comes up with my word for the day, which is snowy. Thanks for that. Should have put on do not disturb. Note to self. Those are the headlines. Sure, there's good light and not so good light, but I have managed to take great face photos. That's a new error. I've managed to take great photos in all sorts of lighting at all sorts of times of the day and night. Let's have a look at these in turn. Number one, the subject. Obviously, the subject is a massive factor in the best time to take a photo. Using a landscape as an example, you wouldn't photograph a landscape when everything's in shadow. You'd photograph it ideally in or around sunrise or sunset or sometime in between. If it's a building, I would like the sun to be on the main feature of the building. The time of day depends on the subject, what you're photographing, where it is. Number two is the orientation of the subject. Ideally, a building will be south-facing and I will photograph it bathed in lovely sunlight. Some clients, however, do not want the building bathed in sunlight. They want a more realistic appearance. So in that case, you'd need to be um, when the sun wasn't on the face. So it's just one of those things to work out. There is a big point at the end of this, which I will get onto. The weather. The weather has an impact on the best time of day to take photos. Why I hear you ask? Well, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, so you've got to consider that constantly moving. But if it's a nice, bright, but overcast day, does it really matter what time you take a photo? Because the sun is diffused by the clouds. If it's a heavily cloudy day, there's not much sunlight getting in. Definitely doesn't matter, does it? So the weather is a factor or can be a factor. Indoors or outdoors? Point four. Now, for my architectural photography work, sometimes one of the main things about an interior shot is the sun streaming in through the window. If that was important to the architect, if that was an important feature, if it makes an average shot great, then I need to know what time that is. I will have drawings showing elevations and their orientation compared to north. So this doesn't only apply to outdoor photos. It does apply to indoor photos. Sometimes it's easier to photograph an interior space when it's overcast and you've got less of a difference in the light inside and outside. Although, as I teased in the last episode, I will talk on a future episode about bracketing and get um, get shot by the purists, I have no doubt. Metaphorically shot, of course. So, outdoors cloudy, I've covered that. Indoors interiors, I've covered that. Sunrise, if you're going out to photograph the sunrise, Don't get there as the sun is rising. Why is that, I hear you ask? I'd love somebody to ask me that. Because you've missed the best bit. When I'm on holiday, I get up and quite often do sunsets and sunrises. Normally sunrises, but I'll come on to that in a minute. I will get to the location and be ready to take photos and to take videos on my phone probably an hour before actual sunrise. And I will also stay there for some time afterwards. Now, what I do on the sunrise is that I will find a shot, a composition that I want. And on a sunrise, I will only be after one photo of that sunrise. Sure, I'll... um, Oh, Pinterest message coming in. It's all happening today. Sure, I'll take more than one photo, but I've got one composition I want to capture. Now, that might involve some advanced um, work, but um, sorry, I'm digressing off the point here. 
After sunrise, you've still got fantastic directional light and I tend to have a wander around and see what else I can get normally when I'm walking back, especially if I'm in a nice sunny place. Sunset, obviously, that is a great time to take a photo. And again, you've got the one or two hours before sunset and then the time after sunset. You normally get more time before than after because once the sun's gone, the sun's gone. But it depends where you are and what the weather's like and what have you. I don't tend to take that many sunsets because um, unlike for sunrise, the sunset's in the evening. In the evening, the bar's open. That sounds bad, doesn't it? I'm normally in the bar. Well, I am normally in the bar in the evening, especially on holidays. That's why sunrise works for me. So yeah, sunset, quite like it, but I prefer sunrise. I also get this wonderful thing called the start of a new day. And normally nobody else is watching what I'm watching from that place. So that's a special thing. Point nine, noon. Do not take photos at noon. You read that all over the place. Nonsense. Noon might be the worst light in the day with the sun directly overhead, but you can still get great photos. I got one the other day on my iPhone just after noon. So do not restrict noon or any other time of the day because there are so many variables to this. Number 10, commercial pressures. Now, if I'm doing a shoot for a client, for an architect, I will have a set time when I can take the photos. I will not have the luxury of sunrise, sunset and all the hours in between. I will probably have from 8 till 10 or 9 till 12 or something. And that will be it. I will have three hours, rain or shine, to get the shots. I do try and plan things so it's fine. I need fine weather. Not raining, that's no use to me. But I do not have a choice of the time of day 95% of the time. So the best I get is some time on a dry day and I have to do the rest of it. So all these people say you can't get great shots then. It's such utter nonsense. It's rubbish. Last point, not my strong suit, artificial light. If the light's rubbish and you need to take a photo, you can introduce lights to make the scene work. I'm not the best one to talk about that. In fact, I'm quite rubbish with artificial lighting. So um, I'll leave that to others. OK, I'm done. Time's nearly up. So what's next in Photography Explained podcast episode 17, it says here. See, I'm getting ahead of myself. Episode 18, of course. Short answers don't know. Subscribe to my podcast and you'll find out when it appears. OK, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy it, please leave a nice review and rating wherever you get your podcast from. And also, please subscribe, as I said before. And if you could tell somebody about my podcast, that would be great. Running out of time, check out my website, rickmcavoyphotography.com. You want me to answer a question? Let me know. I've been Rick McAvoy. Thanks again for listening and giving me 10 minutes of your day. And I will see you on the next episode. Cheers from me, Rick.